In this video tutorial we are going to convert videos to MP4 using the AVS Video Converter. The first time you open AVS Video Converter it is set to AVI. Now we want to work with MP4 so I'm going to click on MP4 and then you see that he changes your profile so you have a whole range here of profiles you can select from uh, but we start out with this one but first I'm going to browse it to a file I want to convert so and that's the one and then the output file name I can set that to a certain folder as well There we go, and here I'm going to call that test. And then the next thing we need to do is to set the profile. Because this is standard uh, profile, but if we uh, are going to use that, it won't work in uh, S3 Amazon. So we have to click here on Advanced. Now the first thing we need to change is to change the video codec. We set that to H264 and the frame size can be original, that's fine. And then the bitrate we can set to 1200 or you can set that a bit lower, uh, but 1200 is a very good quality. And this can be MP4, ISO, V2 version 2, that's fine as well. Uh, frame rate original uh, from the original file, that's, that's good as well. MP2 for audio is good as well. Uh, this we have to change to 4400 Hz. Then the size 16 bits is fine. Uh, bit rate 192, that's fine as well. And stereo is good as well. So now the only thing we need to do is here click on advanced. Okay, so we're going to change a couple of things in this part over here in those four tabs so that it plays uh, properly in S3 Amazon. First, we start with the bitrate and uh, the encoding type here you see single pass bitrate. I have to explain bitrate, otherwise you can't make an informed decision. Uh, bitrate is actually the kilobits per second that is used to produce uh, the images that are in your video. As you know, there are, uh, let's say, about uh, 30 images in, in, uh, in a second. They have to be uh, reproduced uh, as a video and or converted, let's say. Uh, and the higher the bit rates that you use, uh, the more kilobits per second that you use, uh, the better the quality. And the lower uh, bit rate that you use, the lower the quality will be. Okay, so with single pass bit rate, the, the video will be created more or less with an average, in this case, of 1200 kilobits per second, which is quite a lot for the AVS converter at, at least. Uh, 800 uh, kilobits per second is low and 1000 is medium. Now you have another option as well and that is the single pass quantizer. The single pass quantizer will rather go for constant quality. The file size will be completely unknown but the quality will be constant. Uh, now both options are quite good, eh? so in this situation I'm going to take the, the, bit, the single pass bitrate. There are a couple of other options as well, uh, the multipass options. I'm not going to go deeper into this because it's quite advanced. Uh, what it actually does is if you have a lot of trouble with your videos to get the file size right and the quality right, then you might be able to do multipass, so in, convert the video in several steps. But this is quite advanced and will probably confuse you too much, so uh, I'm going to leave it uh, at that and uh, we're going to move on to uh, rate control because you won't do this very often. And here we see three groups, uh, there's one uh, for the bit rates and there's one for the quantization limits and then also for the scene cuts. Now for the bit rate it is important in this situation because we select a single pass bit rate. Uh, here we've got the, the keyframe boost. Everything is in percentages here. Keyframe boost, uh, the higher you set that, the more uh, 
the keyframes are boosted, which uh, results in better quality of the frames that surround the, the keyframes. Uh, to understand what keyframes is about is that you, you have certain keyframes in a, in a video uh, that you use as a reference to uh, determine the colors and, and, and uh, the movement in, in the video. And the more keyframes you've got, uh, the better the quality becomes of your video, but also uh, the video becomes larger in weight, eh? so you have to watch it a bit. So a good uh, average here is 40%. Uh, percent. B-frames reduction can be set from 0 to, let's say, about 60%, uh, and a good average is 30%. I wouldn't uh, change very much on, on this, unless you would be working with animation, then you might try 40 or 50%. The bitrate variability can be set from 0 to 100. Now, in this situation, it is 60, and that is a good average. But what it actually does is that it varies the bitrate we have set in the beginning. Eh? We have set it about 1200 kilobits per second, so that can vary up to 60%. The lower you set this, the more erratic your quality of your video becomes, while if you set it higher, the more stable your quality becomes. But 60 is, 60 is a good average. And then are the quantization limits. Uh, the minimal quantization parameters uh, is set here to 10%. Uh, that's a good average. I wouldn't touch that. So the same thing here with maximum uh, quantizing parameters is uh, 51. That's a good average as well. And the maximum QP step is 4. I wouldn't change anything here. And if it is different on yours, set it to 10, to 51, and to 4. Now, in this situation, you won't you need this, but uh, it is a good idea to set the default like this. And then we get the scene cuts. Now, the scene cut threshold, that means that uh, how sensitive the codec is to scene changes. Now, the higher you set it, the lower the the sensitivity is. Well, the lower you set it, the more sensitive, sensitive it is. Therefore, in darker videos, you set it lower, while in, in average uh, videos, you might set it to 40% as it is here. So that's a good uh, average. Now, the minimum IDR frame interval uh, is here at 25%. Uh, the higher you set it, the more time it takes before the scene change is detected. So it's best to give it an average of about 25. But it can be set from 0 to, I think, uh, 100,000. Then the maximum IDR interval. Setting this too low will result in uh, reduced quality, so it's best set uh, on average of 250. Uh, again, it can range from 0 to 100,000. Okay, so if you are ready with that, then we can step over to the MBs and the frames. And here we have the partition uh, searches. Now, the more searches uh, that, that you perform, the better the quality will be of the codec. But there's a small problem with compatibility in some certain situations. And that is why I selected here four searches that are certainly to work with, or certainly to work on the S3 Amazon uh, server. So I wouldn't try the other two because then you probably run into trouble. Now here, for the B-frames, we have to set this at 2. And then you see that uh, this grayed out part suddenly becomes active. And for B-frames, we also make sure that we have set this to adaptive. Uh, and then the BIOS is best set to 0, that's fine. And then the weighted by predictional we take that as well, and then the direct mode is set to temporal. That's, that's good as well. Now we go over to more. The estimation process of the motion is determined by the partition decision. So the good average is 5. Now don't go ever lower than 5. Because you, your conversion will be faster, but your quality will be a lot lower. So it isn't worth it. Uh, then next, the method. This has to do with the configuration of your computer. Uh, generally, on low power machines, you do use this uh, option here, the hexagonal uh, search. Otherwise, you could go to the uneven multi-hexagonal or the exhaustive search, but then you need high power computers. So generally, you'll select this uh, option over here. 
Now the range here is grayed out, 6 to 6, 16, it has to do with uh, the quality as well. Uh, sorry, I mean with, uh, it has to do with, uh, with the method. So, so in this situation it's set to 16, you can't change it. Okay, then the maximum reference frames, that's set to 1. And it ranges from 0 to 16. And the higher you set it, the lower the codec process will run. So generally we set that to 1. Okay, then miscellaneous options. The threads uh, that depends on how many uh, processors you've got in your computer. Generally, if you're unsure about that, the best sets to one. Then the context adaptive binary arrhythmic coding uh, is is uh, checked on, and only should to be checked off if you want to play it on a portable device that has a slow processor. The trellis is only uh, selected when the con context adaptive binary arrhythmic coding is uh, selected. Uh, it can increase the quality of the video while keeping it uh, in a small small size. And then the deblocking filter, that's when you have blocks or, or artifacts in your original movie and you want to have that removed. This increases the time of the uh, recording as well. Okay, so we're we ready here. We can click on OK. And now the next thing we need to do is to save this uh, profile because we don't want to go to this hoop uh, again and again. Eh? So we click that as set up as a current profile. And in this case, I'm going to call it MP4 bitrate 1200. And for instance, give it a bit of more information by saying 800 by 600 pixels, if that is the case. In my situation, I would use this for tutorials, for instance. That's that. And if I click on that, then that one is saved over here. And you can always find it back, you see. I already created another one, you see, over here and over there. Okay, that's it. So now the other thing we need to do is... Um, Click on convert and then the video will be converted. And here you see the progress bar. When it is at the end, then uh, the conversion is ready. And at the bottom you see here the time that is uh, that has elapsed. And here the remaining, and that's, that's an average calculation, it's not always correct. And here you see the percentage that is uh, of the overall uh, progress. And now the video is ready, so we can open the folder. And then we can have a look at our new video. This is the one. Double click on that one. And there we are, now we can play that. There you go. Okay, that concludes the video tutorial for the AVS video converters to convert a video to MP4. Thank you very much for watching.